So Don, what's your role at VCE? I am the uh, acting CTO. Oh, great, okay, yes. good. Um, so let's talk about convergence. I mean, it's, uh, it's a hot area. Um, it's almost like if you're not, if you're in that business and you're, and you're a large company and you're not doing some kind of convergence, um, you're just not playing the game. So um, yeah, we talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we definitely see that. Um, if, if we look at the way that NTR architectures have evolved over you know, the last couple of years, they become pretty unwieldy to manage. Um, and looking at ways to get this convergence together from the storage, the server, the networking uh, side, um, allows you to concentrate much further up the stack um, in the management, particularly around policies and software and application assurance, as well as making sure the workloads actually have an appropriate uh, you know, location to run, rather than worrying about all the plumbing underneath. Um, I want to talk about, we had Jay Shri Ulal on earlier, who's you know, CEO of Arista, pure play company. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big debate going on around best of breed versus you know, integrated stacks. Obviously HP and IBM and Oracle really are going with the integrated stack approach. Um, companies like uh, Arista and Juniper, uh, NetApp have their pure play approach. You guys are trying to essentially take the best of both worlds and mm -hmm. put it together, right? Uh, I, I think that's a, can a, you have your cake and eat it too is my question. <laughs> I think you can have your cake and eat it too. I, I think that the, the approach is to look at common elements that a companies already have deployed in their data centers. How can they fit better together? And lasso around that a systems approach. If you have that systems approach, you can gain better visibility into what happens on the switch, what happens on the server, what happens on, uh, on the storage, and make sure you get that cor correlation on the physical and logical levels, not, not just on a, um, a management piece of software, a monitoring management piece of software layered on top. Um, if you get those correlations, then you know that that port one, uh, switch one, is really associated with a much greater uh, purpose. And it understands that purpose, and you can do interesting policy-based things based on that. So that leads me to my next question. We, we've had um, Mike Capellas on a couple times in the yes. Cube. And uh, he always makes the point that, I, I like the way he describes it, uh, uh, VBlock is a, is a logical block of infrastructure designed to support applications across the portfolio horizontally, mm -hmm. and it's optimized for the cloud. Why is it optimized for the cloud? Tell us, you know, is that just marketing, or what's the technical reason, or <laughs> you know, you know, the, the technical angle on that? Is, that? is that marketing, or is that real? Well, I think a lot of the, the cloud issues uh, around uh, private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, is really around consistency of experience with your experience with your private cloud infrastructure internally, and your public cloud infrastructure externally. Um, we believe that gaining the consistency of experience is really going to be the launching point for the future of, um, of, of hybrid or pervasive cloud as it emerge, uh, emerges. Uh, to get that consistency of experience, you have to have greater visibility in, in the underlying infrastructure. That infrastructure almost has to act like objects in the object-oriented programming world. That each time it is configured, it runs the same way, provides the same uh, capacities in terms of IOPS, in terms of availabilities. If you have these infrastructure objects, then you have the ability to uh, enable uh, a lot more up on the application tier. They can know that it's going to run the same way with the same consistency of experience each time. So, and, and Joe Tucci's made this point a lot. When you look at uh, companies like Amazon, one of the reasons why they're so successful with their cloud is because it's homogeneous infrastructure. Uh, that's why their costs are low, they're agile. Um, you guys have made the bet that essentially homogeneous infrastructure for the reasons just you just mentioned is the way to go. Well, um, I think you, you could be you know, monogenous, uh, it, it, having a single um, uh, set of infrastructure, much like Amazon, or you can have uh, much more uh, consistent primitives. Those primitives would allow you to ha still have maintain that consistency experience. When you build those building blocks together, you can lasso around a system and understand that the aggregation of those uh, piece parts are going to give you the consistent result. So talk a little bit more about that. You said consistent primitives. Specifically, what do you mean by that? And, and and how do you leverage that in, in at VCE? So it, that's part of the convergence aspect. Understanding the IOPS capacities and capabilities of the underlying building blocks, making sure that there's glue pieces that they fit nicely together, um, and that they're appropriate for a particular workload. Um, those individual building blocks are coming from v, VC and E, uh, VMware, Cisco, EMC. Uh, we understand what they do, and we also understand how they fit together. Then we lasso around that a systems approach. 
That's that platform. We make sure that we have the right elements in there that's appropriate for particular workloads. An infrastructure as a service workload is going to be dramatically different than a desktop uh, as a service workload or a VDI internal within your private cloud. They're going to have different um, ratios that are required from each of the uh, underlying components. But you want to make sure that those components always fit nicely together. And that's really what VCE does. Make sure that the glue pieces are there as well as the um, um, the appropriateness uh, for particular workloads. So is my premise not correct that you're going after homogeneity? Uh, I mean, so I guess I guess in a sense, no, because you've got different types of of, of storage arrays that you support. Right. Um, uh, and, and and so I guess that's that's I, heterogeneity. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a, sort, a different dynamic. Um, we're going for personalization, not customization. Okay. So uh, personalization built on a series of building blocks that are predictable, that are well understood, can give you a, a, a great variety of, of personalization, but each time it's not custom. So today, most IT organizations are, are running in custom, or, uh, custom infrastructures or have a cloud where it's one size fits all. And we know certain applications aren't going to play well in one size fits all, whether it's from a policy perspective for availability or from a, uh, an IOPS perspective. We kind of fit that middle ground where we have underlying components that allow us to give a, um, a very uh, homogeneous experience on the platform level, but it's built to be personalized for a particular workload. And it's pre-engineered, pre-tested, it's a single SKU. So, so that I get. Um, but as you extend, like for instance, um, well, let's see, take management. Mm -hmm. So you've got essentially a single management framework, and that's what you get with, with, with vBlock, and it's tested. Mm -hmm. um, backup. Uh, I guess you have a reference architecture for backup, we have, right? We have many reference architectures yeah. leveraging a, a lot of the great tools from EMC and others. So backup, I have some flexibility in terms of my approach, yes. is that right? So yes. this, you're not forcing a, a homogeneous backup approach, I can, or are you? Is it, no, no, we're really not. How do I back up 6,000 VMs? Yeah. Let me ask yeah. you that question. Right? <laughs> and the answer is always going to be it depends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it depends more on the policy aspects that you're trying to achieve than the uh, technological uh, methods of achieving those, um, right. uh, those policy aspects. Um, what we provide is that, that foundation that then enables choice both in the management tier, uh, a re respecting uh, existing uh, inf uh, investments in infrastructure like a CA um, or best of breed uh, approaches like a, a, a NIMSoft or a, um, um, a Tidal or a, a New Scale. Um, but what we do is we enable choice there because the underlying capacity is a block, is a system that those pieces are already pre-configured underneath. Okay. So it's really that balance of, we enable choice on the solution tier, but we enforce consistency and predictability and consistency of experience inside the infrastructure itself. But as a customer, I don't have a menu of backup choices, right? I, 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 we we have solutions that, that we can provide that, uh, that give you a, a menu, or it can tie into the existing backup uh, policies and infrastructures that are already there. Oh, okay. All right, so, so if it's I not wanna, rip and replace what you if have. If I want to choose whatever, I want to use my existing backup. So backup sort of where you draw that line. Yeah, on it's it's it's, dogmatic. it's probably that next the next um, um, you know estate right outside the border. Right. Whereas a hypervisor, no. I mean, it's, it's VMware. It's VMware. Okay. Correct. Um, where? You know, sorry about this long discussion. <laughs> Thank you for educating me. Um, I'm trying to get to the differences mm -hmm. between. Um, VCE and your major competitors. And I've said it's a two-horse race between VCE and HP, and I think, in fairness, I think NetApp's done a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, Oracle, in its own way, for, and has done different, sort of totally different strategy, but it's got, I guess, you know, a, a V-block-like solution. Uh, but really, HP and, and VCE are the two big ones, and I'm trying to help myself understand the differences. Is it? like Republicans and Democrats, where the similarities are greater than the differences, or are there really substantive differences in approach? So that's why I was sort of asking you so many questions. I'd like you to answer that. What is the difference? Well, the way I would look at it is, a lot of the, the um, ways that we approach this are different. We've, we've came up with convergence very early on. We've been advocating it out for, for more than six quarters now. Um, we've been bringing this to the market and a lot of the other providers are, 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 are fast following. Um, our approach is to look at ways to leverage the best of breed underlying components that everyone in IT is familiar with. Make them into a system that enables a lot of choice on the management tier, on the way that you achieve your policy objectives, but it's tuned and appropriate for applications. Now, others may be much more monolithic in their approach, 
Others may um, be much more reference architecture um, centric in their approach of the underlying components. Um, our hypothesis is you got to get these components to act like a system and we've made the choice of taking best of breed components, the leaders in each of the, uh, the spaces in storage and server and networking as our palette, our building blocks. Provide systems that are appropriate for particular application purposes, whether it's enterprise class applications or infrastructure as a service, um, et cetera, and then enable choice on the solutions that go on top of it. And do it in a way that isn't just single purpose, a VDI infrastructure next to an IIS infrastructure, um, it is multi-tenant or multi-occupant, as we would say, multiple occupancies of applications. Those approaches are, 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 are different than a monolithic approach, an approach that say you can choose anything underneath and then still try to call it a system, or uh, approaches that allow you to tie into best of breeds that are already existing at home. That's kind of like iPhone and Android. I, I, you know, I would I, put I, you guys I, in the iPhone camp. I would it's say we're, we're, we're integrated or closer. I mean, I know it's you know. I'll, Chalk and cheese, but 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 generally speaking, you're fairly dogmatic about yes, about the, the infrastructure. configuration. But, but and you're going to guarantee you know, some a business value on mm -hmm. the other end. I, I think that's um, fair. I think the one piece that makes us slightly different is that IT organizations are already familiar with the the way to manage uh, a Cisco switch, an iOS, and Nexus OS, or we're already familiar with the way to manage a storage subsystem or um, or a server, uh, UCS Blade they understand those components, so it's not as foreign as here's a new black box device that you can't see inside. We provide a lot of that transparency below, um, but we then um, enable that systems approach around it. So they're industry standard components in the case of Intel UCS, or they're right. de facto standards, if yes. you will, in the case of, uh, of VNX, right? It's a, yes. it's a big enough install base, there's enough people out there who understand it that they can take advantage of. And, and we think that that bridge between you know, the way things are run today and the way they need to be run for much more flexible cloud-like um, uh, infrastructures um, is, is a very, very big value proposition for us. We're oh. not saying rip out everything that you oh. have or, or, or learn completely new tools. These are the same tools that you have today and you could build upon that and get that systems-like approach that we all long for. Yeah, the, the value proposition of a, of a pre-configured, pre-tested, pre-engineered infrastructure is enormous. Um, you know, a lot of clients that we've talked to have have worked with SIs, for example, mm -hmm. where the SI created their own little, mm -hmm. you know, uh, V block, and then down the road when they had to do patches and the like, it turned into a bloody nightmare. You guys are taking responsibility for that, and that to me is the most interesting and exciting part of this. And, uh, the, and the other piece is the question I asked before about why is it cloud ready? I mean, this is. It's essentially infrastructure for the cloud platform. Is what yeah, it's built with that purpose in mind, or, or, or enterprise class purposes in mind. It really toggles between that. They're, at, the, at its root, it's different workloads, um, and those workloads have characteristics. If you understand the characteristics, you can get the system to be appropriate for it. My last question for you, Don, is, is what do you see for the future of that whole concept? Um, where's it going? So, so I think where it's going is, uh, today we have convergence around the infrastructure. We have um, a, a lot of emerging elements around the policy and the management. We have a lot of the application. It's, I think the next convergence or the ability to link all of those together to enable an application to reach down in the infrastructure and take advantage of those objects, to be able to provide the infrastructure to say, I have a spare capacity at this time, application you want to change the way that you're running, can you take um, advantage of this capacity in, the, in, in a future timeline? Um, really you know, distinguishing the, those borders. I think um, you know, uh, Steve talked about it right before, Steven talked about it right before, um, looking at ways to really you know, provide that transparency between the virtualization tier and the infrastructure, mm. the policy and the application. I think they're going to come together as we emerge to applications that are actually written for this type of infrastructure versus applications that are written for uh, previous infrastructures. Don Norbeck, CTO of VC, thank you, first of all, for Great. stepping in for Todd Pavone. Yep. Um, Good friend, uh, tell him I said hi if you talk to him, and uh, and uh, thanks for coming yeah, on the show. Enjoy your next visit to Shore. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. This.